Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. Bills fanatics, welcome to episode two of the Build Up Podcast. I am your host, Fern Banatine, and you can reach me on Twitter at at FBanaty, that's at F-B-A-N-N-A-T-Y, or you can keep leaving your comments at the bottom of this YouTube video, always appreciate it. And by now, I hope that most of you are over your emotional hangover from that roller coaster ride last Sunday. Damn, that was a great emotional victory, super entertaining game. It's nice to finally be on the other side of one of these victories. I feel that in many opening days past, we have been the recipients of a heartbreaking loss. So it's nice to have the roles reversed here in 2019. But now it's time to move on to week two of the NFL season. And on today's episode, we are going to discuss everything related to the Buffalo Bills upcoming game in week two of the season. When our Buffalo Bills travel back to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Giants. And now we have a golden opportunity to go up on this season. If we can come out with a win here and get our record to 2-0 going into our home opener against the Cincinnati Bengals. I think that would put us in a really good position to make that playoff run that we all hope we can do this year. So let's get ready for that second game of the season. Over the course of this week's episode, I'm going to... Give you a little bit of a synopsis of the New York Giants team. We will talk about three keys for the Buffalo Bills to come out victorious in this week's game. I'm also going to give you a predicted score. I'm going to follow this format uh, most weeks of the Build Up podcast. Now, before we get into that, I do want to just briefly touch on the week one victory. And first and foremost, I want to give myself the old uh, Barry Horowitz pat on the back. For some of the predictions I made in last week's podcast against the New York Jets. i got to hype my brand here. And I'm sure I'll take the bullet on some predictions that I will get wrong throughout the season. Uh, but for now, I said that some big chunk plays, maybe from John Brown, would be our first key to victory. And Brown did come through with that game-winning touchdown. I told you all that John Brown might be a sneaky fantasy play. If you did play Brown, you're probably looking good pretty good in your week one matchup because he did come through for you he had seven catches for 123 yards and that huge game winning touchdown i also mentioned another key to victory would be uh, making less mistakes in the special teams game and that was obviously a huge factor with jets kicker Corey vedvik missing a field goal and an extra point early in that football game Uh, without those misses it's very likely that the bills do not win this football game considering we won by one point uh, the other key to victory that I talked about was that we would have to contain Le'Veon Bell. Now, he did score a touchdown and had a nice two-point conversion. He also had that really nice fourth down conversion late in the game on that really strong second effort. But I think ultimately, we kept him to 3.5 yards of carry. Um, he looked dynamic out there. He didn't look like he had lost a step, but I think our run defense played really well. And the defense as a whole was really the uh, primary reason we won this game. They played outstanding. I thought the defensive line had a great game. Jermaine Edmonds looked really good out there. Matt Milano made some plays. Uh, Jordan Poirier seemed to be all over the field. Uh, Levi Wallace had some nice plays. So the whole defense contributed to this victory. And then the offense made those key plays down the stretch to pull this week one win out of the hat. So looking ahead at this week's game versus the Giants. Well, the Bills are actually road favorites. We are, uh, by most sportsbooks odds, uh, two-point favorites. Some lines have us at 1.5-point favorites. Uh, The line has moved a little bit down from a 2.5 margin to the 1.5 and 2-point margin. So there is money coming in on the Giants as the home team. Not surprised that the Bills don't get much respect from the early sports bettors. Uh, But looking at this New York Giants football team, Now, granted, they are coming off a shellacking uh, by the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, They lost 35-17 in Week 1. They could not do anything to stop Dak Prescott. They also did not have a very good offseason when their general manager, Dave Gettleman, 
was criticized quite a bit, in particular for some of his draft picks in the 2019 NFL Draft, uh, taking quarterback Daniel Jones with the number six pick overall. Most people considered that a reach. And then he took a big old run-stopping nose tackle at number 17 overall in Clemson's Dexter Lawrence. He also traded away superstar wide receiver Odell Beckham, of course, to the Browns in the offseason. But listen, here's the deal. No, they may not have the most innovative offense and they may have some archaic philosophies, but the NFL hasn't changed that much. And investing in the trenches is still as important as it ever has been. And it's still a foundational element to success in this league. All you have to do is look at a team like the Browns this past week with all that talent that they have. When their offensive line crumbled in week one versus the Tennessee Titans, that team fell apart, got rattled, made a lot of mistakes. And the argument I always make is, well, when was the last time one of these prima donna, number one type receivers has ever won a Super Bowl? You look at your Julio Jones, your Odell Beckham, your DeAndre Hopkins. Now, I don't think so. Uh, Antonio Brown did win a Super Bowl in his rookie year, but he wasn't really a key contributor to that team. So you look at what Dave Gettleman is trying to do with this New York Giants team. Uh, Once he traded Odell Beckham, he went out and acquired Kevin Zeitler in a trade, an offensive guard. The year before, he had drafted Will Hernandez and signed Nate Soldier to other offensive linemen. Then on the defensive side of the ball, of course, he drafted Dexter Lawrence. And you, you start to see the blueprint that he's trying to put together here, build the team from the inside out. And call me old-fashioned, but I still don't think that it's a terrible philosophy to do so. And now, ultimately, I'm just trying to be nice here. And that is where my defense of Dave Gettleman and his uh, building of this team so far ends. I wanted to say something nice about them, but I think the bottom line is after those moves, uh, this team is extremely void of talent. Uh, In the offseason, they lost their two best players on defense and Olivier Vernon, a key pass rusher and safety land in Collins. Now, it may be a case where they're trying to clear up their salary cap to prepare for future years, and maybe it's one of those true rebuilds. They will have a ridiculous dead cap amount going into this year. It's around $35 million. I believe it's second most in the NFL next to the Arizona Cardinals. But after that week one loss, you start to wonder about the direction that Dave Gettleman is taking this team. Just such a disappointing loss to get blown out like that by a division rival. And maybe this is an overreaction to a one game. But suffice to say, I do believe that the Bills have a great opportunity here. If we can play it a nice clean game, I think we're the more talented team at this stage. And we are probably going to have to underachieve in this game uh, to find a way to lose. And I'm not saying that's not possible. Uh, considering what we saw in the first half of week one and uh, I'll touch on this a little later but I think this is a New York Giants team that's going to be hungry to win this football game. I can envision certain scenarios about how this game uh, could play out in the New York Giants favor and if we are going to talk about those scenarios I think that's a perfect segue to talk about the three keys to victory for the Bills to pull out another win in Meadowlands. And to start it off, the number one key to the Buffalo Bills securing a victory in this week's game is not about exploiting matchups, it's not about strategy, it's not about tactics. It comes down to basics, and I think this is obvious from last week's game. Is we have to limit the mistakes we make, and we cannot lose the turnover battle like we did last week. Quite frankly, last week's game was an anomaly. If we get out turnovered by a margin of 4-1 to one, again, we are not going to beat the New York Giants. Uh, we probably wouldn't even beat the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, we'd probably still beat the Miami Dolphins, but I don't want to pick on them too much. I know those Miami Dolphins fans are going through a hard time right now. And I will say that uh, limiting those turnovers and mistakes is primarily going to fall on our young second-year quarterback, Josh Allen's shoulders. Now, certainly Josh Allen wasn't solely to blame for some of those early turnovers in Week 1. If you look at that pick 6, the ball went off Cole Beasley's hands and into the defender, C.J. Mosley's arms. And then the early fumble before that, uh, the outside linebacker, Jordan Jenkins, beat Deion Dawkins pretty badly on that play. But even over and above those four turnovers, there were a few other kind of boneheaded plays by Allen... 
He threw that interception off his back foot that uh, luckily did not count because of a penalty. Now, I did hear that there's speculation that he saw the penalty flag and that's why he chucked the ball up. I'm not certain if that's the case. But regardless, uh, Allen has to be smarter with the football. He is ultimately going to be accountable as the leader quarterback of this team. He's got to learn quickly when to throw the ball away and not when to make those cowboy type plays. Now certainly that gunslinger mentality is going to do him well in his career to some extent. He's obviously got that elite level arm strength and you don't want to suppress that to a point where he becomes a check down type quarterback. I don't think that's the ideal scenario either. But he's just got to find a balance somehow and just take a little bit more of a calculated approach. And I'm sure that will come with experience to some extent. Uh, But the progress has to begin right away if we want to be winning football games. If we come out of these games losing the turnover battle by a 4-1 to margin, we are not going to win football games. And it's as basic as that. And that's the number one key to victory in this football game. Now, I also do not want this to turn into uh, some sort of critique of Josh Allen. Because ultimately, I was actually very impressed with his play in week one. I thought he... Uh, did not have those accuracy issues that he so often gets labeled as having. You can already see the chemistry developing with both John Brown and Cole Beasley. I also want to shout out to John Brown, by the way. I thought he played an excellent football game. Uh, He's been in the league for a few years, but I didn't realize he was this good. Uh, He seems to have super glue attached to his gloves. He catches everything. He easily gains separation. Of course, the problem with John Brown has always been the injuries. So let's hope that he can stay healthy for as long as possible because he's going to be a key element to this offense. All right. So now I want to talk about the second key to victory. This one is fairly similar to last week when I talked about how the Bills had to contain Le'Veon Bell. And for as great as Le'Veon Bell is, there may only be one better all-around running back in the NFL right now. Second-year running back Saquon Barkley. Most of us are probably familiar with Barkley. He's just, I think, pretty clearly the best running back in the game right now. And he is by far the most talented player on this depleted New York Giants team. They also have a pretty good young tight end in Evan Ingram. But I think he's uh, by far the most second most talented player on this football team. Now, I didn't think the Giants did a very good job last week against the Cowboys in terms of getting the ball into Barkley's hands. There was a few questionable play calls, I thought. He only carried the ball 11 times and caught four passes. And I fully expect the Giants to try to turn that around this week. I think they're going to do all they can to make him the focal point of their offense in a variety of ways. And to counter that, I do think that the Bills, um, and this is something that I said in the preseason as well, that the Bills' run defense looks extremely strong this year. Uh, Even though uh, Le'Veon Bell had a few nice plays last game, that's going to happen with a running back like him. I think ultimately, if you look at the big picture, our run defense played extremely well last week. And we have to essentially do the same thing this week with Barkley because he's the one player on that team that can take a game over. If he gets a few big runs... And if the Giants get off to an early lead where they can just continue to feed him the ball, that's not going to go well for the Buffalo Bills. So if it's about uh, maybe not falling behind early, uh, maybe stacking the box if we have to, we just have to find ways to both limit Saquon Barkley getting the ball and uh, limit the plays he makes when he does get the ball. It's easier said than done, but it's going to be Probably aside from the turnover game, it's going to be probably the only other way that the New York Giants pull out a victory if they can get a huge game from Saquon Barkley. And kind of related to this key to victory is that I think the Bills really have to find a way to get out and stay out ahead in this game. Because if the Giants do get out to a lead, they are going to be able to ride Saquon Barkley and feed him a high volume of targets. Whereas if they're behind, uh, it's going to force Eli Manning to throw And I think we've seen over the course of week one and last season that Manning simply is very hesitant to throw downfield even when behind. Uh, In week one, he seemed to be taking way too many checkdowns. He may be a case where he just doesn't have the confidence in his arm anymore. And that's a situation that we want to exploit. Get the ball in Eli Manning's hands instead of Saquon Barkley's hands. And that's going to give us a great opportunity to come out of this game on the road with another victory. So since those first two keys to victory were more of your basic uh, fundamental type keys to victory, 
Uh, with this third one, I want to talk about more of a, a tactical matchup exploitation type key to winning this football game. And it has to do with our rushing attack and specifically uh, Josh Allen's rushing ability. Like I mentioned, the Giants defense is uh, very devoid of playmakers and had major struggles last week against the Dallas Cowboys. Now what they're trying to do is play a pretty aggressive man cover scheme with their cornerbacks. Uh, they have a pretty decent cornerback on one side of the field in Janoris Jenkins, a solid veteran out there. And then they're starting rookie cornerback DeAndre Baker on the other side of Jenkins, who really suffered through some growing pains that first game. He was beat for uh, several long plays and a touchdown, maybe even more than one touchdown, but I know one touchdown for sure. And according to the analyst at the PFF website, uh, Baker had the second worst cover grade of all starting cornerbacks in the league uh, in week one. Now, throughout the game, they also used cornerback Antonio Hamilton interchangeably in that second cornerback spot, and he did not fare much better. He also had a pretty terrible uh, coverage grade over the course of week one. But you know what? I'm going to stick with my guy, uh, DeAndre Baker. Uh, coming out of the 2019 college season, I had him as my number one ranked cornerback, and I'm going to stick with him having a bit of a bounce back game. And I'm going to say that the cornerback group on this New York Giants team is markedly better than the cornerbacks that we faced against the New York Jets. And I think maybe a better approach tactically is to take advantage of that aggressive man cover scheme and maybe design some plays where Josh Allen can use his feet to gain yards. Uh, get him out there in space against linebackers and maybe defensive linemen, and we know he can have success in this area. Uh, the Giants' linebacking core uh, does not exactly strike fear in the hearts of many NFL teams, so I think this might be a very effective strategy in this particular game. I will say that I'm a little tentative about drawing up too many rushing plays for Mr. Allen because he uh, will always have to absorb the hits on those plays. I do get nervous every time I see him take a hit and just hope that he gets up and bounces back as quickly as possible. So it may not be the best uh, long-term sustainable plan to keep designing an abundance of run plays for Josh Allen. But I do see a hole in the New York Giants defense, and I think that's an area that we can exploit if Josh Allen can get some big runs going in this game. I'd be remiss then if I didn't mention Devin Singletary. I haven't mentioned him yet. On last week's podcast, I talked a little bit about how our run game is uh, fairly uncertain at this point uh, because we just didn't have a good feel about what Devin Singletary is actually going to provide in his rookie year against NFL competition. But even in his limited touches in the second half last week, I think there was reason to be very excited about what we do have in this young player. He looked like the type of player that we are going to need if uh, we are going to have a balanced attack, which I think is a, a major precursor for success, uh, at least on the offensive side of the ball this year. Uh, quite frankly, his play in the fourth quarter was one of the major reasons that we won this football game. He averaged an amazing 17 yards per carry on four carries in that second half of that football game. And he was used effectively in the receiving game as well. He shook off some early jitters to make a few plays. And I think going forward, and in particular in this Week 2 game against the Giants, uh, he could be a factor as well. Uh, but I'll stick to my early point I made, that the, a key to victory is going to be some uh, Josh Allen runs when he does exploit the middle of the field and exploit some good matchups and take advantage of that Giants man-to-man uh, -man scheme. And like I said last week, I do think the Bills have a really good opportunity to score points against the defense we're playing. I just don't think that the Giants are really there yet on defense. They're trying to build a, a young defense up, but uh, they really lack those pass rushers. Uh, really on all levels of the defense, they are a little inexperienced, and they clearly haven't put it all together yet, if last week is any indication. Now I think with that, uh, what I'll do is I will move on to give you a predicted score for this game. And even though I clearly think that we are the more talented team, uh, this game does worry me somewhat. Uh, we're coming off a big emotional victory against a division rival. We're playing this New York Giants team that's coming off a fairly embarrassing loss to one of their division rivals. They're not going to be happy. They're going to come out and they're going to play hard at home. And They know that even though they probably don't have high expectations uh, this year, the Giants football team, you can't tell that to the players. And they know how important it is that they don't fall behind 0-2 uh, early in the season and what that means for their playoff hopes. Um, all that being said, 
I do still think that there are uh, just way too many ways for the Bills to pull out a win here versus ways for the Giants to pull out a win. And I also think that this coaching staff is going to have this team ready to play. I don't think we played our best game that first week either. And if we come in here and play some pretty neat and clean football and win that turnover battle, I do think that our talent is going to win out and we are going to win this football game. But I don't think it's going to be one of those blowout type games. It's going to be a very hard fought battle. Again, like I mentioned last week against the Jets defense, I think we'll be able to score some points against this. Uh, again, another weak defense in the Giants defense. Now, obviously, we didn't get to score many points because of all those turnovers in the first half. But in this game, I also think that the Giants offense is going to struggle a little scoring points against our defense. But I'm going to predict a 23-16 to 16 victory this week against the New York Giants. That would put us up 2-0 on the season. Two very big road wins. And then we go into a matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals uh, in Week 3 with an opportunity to go up 3-0. and I will mention that the Cincinnati Bengals played a heck of a football game in Week 1 against the Seattle Seahawks. Andrew Dalton had a really strong game. So that's probably not a quote-unquote cakewalk game as we thought that it might be. Not that there's many of those across the NFL anymore. Except for that one team, that division rival that I already mentioned, who were outright embarrassed in week one. I don't want to pour salt on the wounds right now. I think that's bad karma. But back to the topic at hand, I do think that the Bills are going to eke out a very close victory here against the New York Giants in week two. And with that, I am going to wrap this podcast up for this week. It's the best time of the year. The Bills are 1-0. and and 1-0 in the division as well after beating a heated rival. We have an excellent opportunity in week two to get a really good start to the season. That should only increase the excitement. So until next time, go Buffalo Bills.